Greetings, psychonauts, and welcome back to the Shed Talk. So, I'm not going to beat round the bush. Lately, um, I lost someone very close to me. It was actually my nan. Um, I'll briefly, briefly show you her. Uh, she was a really beautiful, conscious, loving woman, very kind, caring soul, um, and one of the greatest influences on my entire life. Uh, and to be honest, the first person I can genuinely say uh, that I've lost to death, that I was the closest to, and, and actually had the most visceral reaction from the passing. Uh, there was a lot of pain, there was a lot of grief, but you know what? Thanks to my experiences with psychedelics and mystical states, meditation, breath work, and just exploring this thing that we call consciousness, um, it's also allowed me to be at peace and actually almost content with her passing. Obviously there is still that, but you know when someone, you lose someone or anything, you go through a heartbreak of any kind and you literally feel, you feel it right there lad. Um, in certain moments, especially when you reflect on uh, how they influence your life and just all the loving moments and also the, the painful ones as well and then you realise, oh, they're actually not there in the in the physical anymore. Uh, that's when it does, it does hurt. But what really is that? Um, if anything, it's the pain of loss allows you to realise how real that connection you had with them was because that actually is just another form of that that, that tightness there that is um li that is living proof of uh, your love and your bond that you had with this person um i think i've been able to deal with uh, my nana's passing the best out of my whole family because of my experience with spirituality and actual genuine ego dissolution in a sense uh, uh, a bit of a glimpse of death um, not even just an ego death in other complex like, I've talked about the 4ACO DMT trip report where I became a fucking um, galaxy brain consciousness uh, almost like some alien hive mind and it was the most loving peaceful liberating um, state of consciousness I've ever been thrust into um, and all of these experiences, not saying that I should, I think you should do any of them, you can come to this realisation just within your own sober mind as well, if you just really tap into like what is, what is life and uh, how everything fits together in the grand scheme of things. But for me, the way I've coped uh, and understood not only my own uh, imminent demise, but the loss of other people and, and actually be being content with it, it is through these psychedelic experiences of of experiencing the the, the dissolution of self and realizing um, the grand trickery that is at play with death and how how in the West, especially in the West about how we've demonized death and we turn it into something to fear or run away from or or think that it's the yeah the be all and end all the end and there's nothing after that. Which is funny because even even in the West, with us being in this like Judeo-Christian culture, we're still we still don't understand. Even though they talk about heaven and and the and the afterlife and peace and God and yada yada, we Westerners still fear um, the end of life. But in a sense, psychedelics are some of the best tools to help you understand what's going on because. They allow, because obviously they are consciousness enhancers, so they allow you to chip away the egoic bullshittery that you use to perceive everything in life. Like, oh no, it must be bad because it's the end of all these things, these material things that I'm attached to. Um, but actually it's the greatest peace, and I know my nan, God bless her soul, he doesn't even need to bless her soul because she was already blessed. You wouldn't believe how intelligent and open-minded uh, she really was. I mean, what other nanas like full metal alchemist i don't know any that that's just on another level isn't it she was a really open-minded loving person who cared so much about the world um she was a deeply progressive person not in the, the sort of like twitter liberal uh, modern progressive sort of stuff a classic progressive person who just wanted 
the world to get better, for people to get better, and she was into aliens. Uh, we had some super profound conversations all the time. Every week I'd take a shop in for four or five years, um, up till just a week before her, a week or two before her passing, which came about very suddenly. Um, it was almost, she was a very, very uh, in tune person with herself. It was almost like she was holding on for the right moment to let go, and we all, we all told her to let go, and she just said, you're the greatest loves of my life, and I'll always be with you. Because she knew she would be. She wasn't a deeply religious person in a sense, but she knew there was something more to this, this game of life. It's too complex, too beautiful, too intricate to just end like that. And I always uh, confided in that with her. Um, because uh, it, 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 obviously I, I'm com contemplating death right now, but I'm very young. I mean, I could literally die when I walk out of the shed. I mean, look at that, I could literally fall over, knock me head on the chimney here, and fucking be gone, mate. So... <clears throat> You don't know when it's going to come, but the, the thing is, you shouldn't... Uh, what I... Yeah, I need to collect my thoughts. There is no... The, the fear of death for me, of what it is, like, the, there's the fear of, like, oh, losing my life too short, or, like, how you die, and there's always going to be that sort of fear, that, um, like, material-level suffering fear, there's always going to be that. But the actual death itself, the actual... The actual thing, death, that what is it? It's just you becoming one with everything, becoming one with infinity. It's 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 an endless sea of of love and imagination and and <laughs> it, it, it's crazy because I've never actually gone the full way with psychedelics, but it's so clear to me through my limited mystical experiences of what it is, and it's it's just it's just it's just love, baby. And it, but it really is. It is just endless, infinite love. Your whole life has been leading towards death. It literally is. It's a, your life is a ticking time bomb towards death. And the irony of of of, la, of humans is that we're running away from death all the time and demonising and creating these fantasies surrounding it, based upon secondary sources and and just looking at. I mean, when people die, obviously it can be quite gruesome or, or disturbing and etc. But the actual end of the consciousness, that moment where your consciousness ends, it, it, it quite literally is the greatest moment of your life because your whole life has been building up to it. In a sense, life and death are the same thing because nothing is something. You created life out of death because death is the limit. It is the absence of all limitation. Um, it allows consciousness to be one, be completely unified and be without restriction, allowing it to create... Whoa! It allowed me to create this, mate. Fucking hell, what a bloody mind blower that is, like. So, yeah, in a sense, reincarnation is a thing, but you don't even need to... There was a great trip report that I shared, many of you will probably um, remember it, where it, along the lines of, there is no need to reincarnate because I am already everywhere. So you don't reincarnate, you just incarnate, you just become... You just become another part of yourself so i'd say we're in like let's hypothetically speaking again i must this is the super disclaimer i don't actually know fucking anything really i'm just trying to give you some of my insights that i've had based upon my seriously out there experiences that i won't deny are fucking mental and i just don't think many people have had them and again that doesn't make me better or more conscious or wise than anyone else i just think i've seen parts of reality that most people haven't and uh, i'm just trying to help other people who might be stuck within fear break out of that fear and transcend it but again don't be doing like i did don't be taking all that force for aco dmt for aco dmt it wasn't very nice to be honest until the moment of liberation that was beautiful and i guess it was worth it but in a sense i also think mm, i already sort of knew it deep down but it was a very direct experience of like oh right when i die it's just just the loss of the Vivek mask and it's becoming the infinite, becoming one with, with God. And what is God really? It's just infinity. It's, it, it's the universe, the capital U universe. All all of everything, existence, nothing, something, everything in between. Uh, and it's pure love and connectivity, unification. Um, the, the lack, the, it's just, there's no suffering because suffering is something that infinite mind imagines for its for itself to experience this three-dimensional plane of existence because there needs to be that polarity the the the, the 
yin yang polarity for there to be a, a, a physical plane to exist there needs to be stakes there needs to be the the drama of life um for the solidity of the three-dimensional existence to be made manifest uh you'll notice again and this is another thing uh, that's allowed me to cope with uh, the the loss of my my uh, my nan um is that I know, in a sense, in a in a quite beautifully poetic sense, Nana's passing was her last gift to myself and my whole family and anyone she touched. Uh, her whole life was uh, a selfish. Her whole life was a service to others. Um, you could not have imagined a more compassionate person. And even in her last moments, it was never ever about her. Even in the last moments, she was like, "Have you put the bins out? Have you got that money?" Uh, or make sure uh, the washing up's been done. It was all. It was never about her, even in a in a quite um, uh, tragic circumstances of her, of her last few days. And what was what was funny was she was always still there. She was so sharp. She was so conscious and and amusing even to the last moments. But her final gift to me and all my family is that her her passing is now her passing and the suffering that comes with it and the eventual moving on uh, because you never moving on implies that you just like f forget them you don't you never forget them but you let the suffering go in fact you transmute the suffering into something positive and it's now time for me to change my life in so many areas uh, that i've been sucking on it's time for me to go and travel the world and stop being scared of, of everything because i do have a lot of fear but it's time for me to grab reality by the balls and really accelerate my growth people might be like oh what the fuck's it on about but when you experience this and you tap into that consciousness tap into the feeling and stop being an autistic robot like i was because no judgment to autistic robots because i fucking still am one basically that's really trying to uh tap into the the the, the ghost within the shell um and I'm now finally realising that, okay, all this suffering that I've ever been through, every single time I just can't deny it anymore. As much as you don't like suffering in the moment, the pain, the physical the physical and emotional pain and uh, the, yeah, the mental labour of having to deal with it, you do grow out of it and become a better person and start achieving your dreams and, and tapping into higher levels of consciousness. And I know I'm now going to go travel in Japan, I'm going to go to the US, I'm going to go to VidCon, I'm going to take Vivek to higher places. Um, I'm really gonna basically. I'll tell you what else it's gonna do. It's gonna inspire me to get rid of this fucking GoPro because it just keeps overheating. I have no idea what's wrong with it. But what can you do, Barry? Storage dead. Uh, and Nana's passing will allow me to tap back into my own health, health of mind, health of body, health of the soul because she knew that's what I really wanted. And obviously, I'm a very chaotic m person. Uh, and I know that she knew that I knew deep down what I should be doing is focusing on my on my health and to stop doing ridiculous things that impede my growth uh, and that hurt me deep down. But that I, I'm stuck on a cycle of of, uh, of doing. Um, I'm going to actually get onto a therapist and possibly really get this ADHD stuff um, tackled because. I don't think I can achieve the things I want to in life if if my mind operates like this all the time. It's just not stable. Um, I think it's something I've been putting off for a long time and uh, it's something that she encouraged me to do in a very subtle way. She would never be like, you need to do this or that. She was not that sort of person. She uh, was just, yeah, compassionate and understanding. They say, oh, this person didn't have a bad bone in the body, but she did not. There was no malevolence at all and life rewarded rewarded her uh, in dividends by allowing to love life to the fullest and give that love to everyone else and she really did in a sense she's made vivek her influence uh, and her nurturing energy has carved out my ability to do that from a young age from caring for me as a child um, encouraging me to do all these these weird wacky things and just be who I am deep down not not wanting me to be anything else so thank you Anna. I love you I know you're here you're always here you with me you with everybody and you're with the universe itself she actually looked towards the light when she passed away uh, which says a lot especially if you watch a lot of these near-death experiences uh, well read about them and 
watch the videos that I share on them, and even trip reports where like, yeah, the, what is in God? What is infinity? It's a, it's an, it's an infinite singularity of, 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 of nothingness, of white light, of purity, uh, of lack of boundary. So many words you can use to describe it, and it can be experienced through deep meditation, breath work, uh, intense suffering. Um, so many different avenues, just random spiritual awakening. Some people are just genetically modified to just be like, oh, I'm just walking down the street and ching, oh, I'm, I'm God, or I've realized God, or so many th different facets that can be experienced uh, via the awakening journey. But the, the thing that's worked for me and can work for many people as tools is psychedelics, uh, because they really do amplify consciousness to a point where you're so conscious that basically reality breaks down. I've seen this like everything here, everything just literally just melts away. Holy fuck! Um, and uh, yeah, you just become infinite mind, and you realise that oh, this whole ego separation bollocks was just a game I was playing with myself, uh, and it was a really beautiful, funny game that ended with me rejoining all of my disparate parts into a unified field of love consciousness and um just pure embrace and connection so yep there is nothing to fear with death and i, I empathize with anyone who's actually going through the dying process i mean it's not it's, this is not an easy thing to transcend and i'm not fully transcended it as again i still i'm still saying that the way my mind is uh, wired up is so unstable that i do fear the worst of every situation and overanalyze life to death, um, but it needs to fucking. I uh, seriously, I've obviously got a chemical deficit. I'd love to get. On, I need to get on some medication or something. Um, and also fried my brain, fried me brain from doing ketamine all the time, which is not something my nan would want me to do, uh, and would not want me to continue doing at all. So, in memory of her, in respect of her energy and consciousness, and by extension respect of my own consciousness that she would want me to realize in my own self i have used the suffering of her passing and have transmuted it into positive change uh, and you can do this as well really just tap into it just tap into yourself i say this a lot to people who message me like uh, asking for advice and I, I try to give as much practical tangible advice as possible but the sort of airy fairy woo woo metaphysical advice i'm like tap into this tap into that um, obviously some people can't do that and I, I, I un understand that as well because I couldn't do that either just with, with the way uh, culture had programmed me from my whole life and just the way I was just wired up as a as an ego but <clears throat> that's why psychedelics if used wisely are very important tools for the world that we live in now to break out of this just this bullshit that we're currently uh, woven into of just disconnection with, with ourself and other and everything and why there's so much fucking next level diatribe whipped around on the internet and why everyone's just fucking want to take everyone down and everyone, I'm better than you and you're worse than me or, or you're worse than me it's either like the narcissistic complex or the victim complex or that I just I'm like an NPC don't go fuck about anything complex how can we make a better world when we when we live in this shallow um state of being and psychedelics can help with that but they're not the be all and end all and they're not the full tool that will help you understand this in fact psychedelics in a sense to just end this video have not helped me in a sense well, they've been a stepping stone towards understanding and coping with death and transcending the fear of what it is uh, but really what actually was the thing that helped me crystallize that it was consciousness it was mind it was the integration after the fact. If you don't integrate psychedelics and the insights that you tap into when you're on them, they are basically basically just fairy dust. It's just nothingness, it's just theory, it's just fuck all. So if you don't put the steps in place, you're not gonna reap uh, what you end up sowing. I mean, if you're sowing good shit, you'll reap some good shit. If you're sowing bad stuff, you're gonna reap some bad stuff like yeah. So make sure, you, make sure you're sowing some good seeds. Um, but don't expect life to just be like, oh, here's everything on a plate, oh, here's all the, the dividends that you expect and, and, and want, and maybe egoically. 
Right, since the camera has decided to fry itself from the inside out for the second time today, I'll take that as a shine from the universe to end this edition of Shed Talk. So, in a nutshell, thank you Nana for giving me a beautiful life, being a beautiful person and having your existence be a testament to what life is really about, connection, unification, love, um, yeah service to others uh, to spread as much love as you can and live as deep of a life as possible and you can and you carve out an, uh, a beautiful state of being for yourself and others through nurturing the yourself and other and unifying both of them and just being a brilliant person overall and I will respect your energy because I know it's not just what you would want but what you deserve is for me to make a great life for myself and help as many people as I can in the process because that's what life is really about Kakarot so uh, yeah we're now coming outside breathing in the air breathe Right, you're all probably sick of it now, but I'll see you on the other side. Like it.